But I really want to go to the Garden of the Gods out there. Yeah, it's great. And Pike's Peak, because it's right next to there. <sighs> Hello. I'm Corey. I'm Logan. Let's turn this down. And today I'm going to tell you some more shit you didn't know. And as a preface, if nobody realizes this, um, Logan doesn't know the stories I'm telling him. He has no idea what's going on. I'm telling him a story and we're getting his real-time reaction. So, this is all unfiltered. Yeah, I have no idea what's ever going on with this. Yeah, and I'm definitely not editing it because I don't know how. So I'm definitely not editing Same. it. Same. So. Yeah, I'm like going on YouTube figuring stuff out as we speak. But it'll get better. The quality, uh, you know. I put a lot more work into the story than I do the technological aspects of putting out the story. So I mean that's the best part of it, right? <laughs> Learning what the fuck is wrong with people. So what is in our hipster beer this uh, series this week? This is uh, week number three, and it is Alaskan Husky IPA. It's pretty it's, good. Yeah, it's labeled as a Mosaic India Pale Ale. I don't know what Mosaic means, but it's pretty good. And it's made in the mountains of Alaska. And it's purified with the tears of the native people that we stole the land from. And that's what's important. Well, at least it's not stolen from the native uh, people we gave blankets to. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Otherwise, would you really want to drink it? <laughs> you went dark first. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you that. So, um... Uh, <clears throat> oh, go gotta ahead. warm up a little bit. Yeah, exactly. You went dark first. So... So, uh, David Ike, I said, David Ike was born on April 29, 1952, in Leicester, England, to Barrick and Barbara Ike. He was the middle of three sons. His father was an orderly in the Royal Air Force and even won a British Empire Medal for gallantry when he saved the life of a crew member who crashed into his ship. After the war, Barrick Ike became a clerk, and when David was three, the family moved into public housing, and he grew up in poverty. Yeah, you know, I guess it's not much different across the pond than it is from here with the soldiers coming back. How is it? Right. Yeah. Oh, thanks for all you did. Uh, here. Especially Vietnam and Korea. Yeah. God. God damn it. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks Lost for your brother, service. I'm gonna spin on you. Yeah. Thank you for right. your service. Accept mediocrity and shut up. <laughs> That's welcome back to America. <laughs> God. That's. It's not much different over there. Thanks, Jane Fonda. He <laughs> recalled that he and his brothers would have to hide under a chair or a window when the councilman, which is our version of a landlord, came looking for the rent. I, I, I was pretty fucked up as a kid. Now go play hide and seek with the landlord. <laughs> First it was the uncle, now it's the landlord. If he sees you, you have to sleep on the street for a week. Could be worse. It could be like the time I went camping. My dad's like, "Hey, we're gonna go camp at Camp Wally." What's that? Oh, Walmart parking lot. Oh, uh, <laughs> what a road trip! Oh my god. Well, you know, meth heads are pretty entertaining. So, and that's what you see at night at Walmart. And there's always open. So if you get a little package, you just walk up front, grab the sandwich, like, walk back out. It's like a clown that you never ordered for birthday party. You never invited anyone. <laughs> seeing a meth head like and it's and it's appeal in a, in a Walmart at night what's funny the, is it was in South Dakota oh my god Ugh. like rural South Dakota oh yeah there's meth everywhere um, so David was described as a loner he spent hours playing with his toy trains he would purposely avoid people on his daily walks and at school he would feel so shy and nervous around the other kids that he'd feel faint and light headed when someone spoke to him the family doctor doctor suggested that he be taken to a child psychologist but David's father refused to do it yeah <laughs> yay for mental health you know you're not going to a psychologist you're just fucking stupid <laughs> he's just a stupid boy <laughs> he doesn't need a bloody psychologist man that's him close to home on that one <laughs> <laughs> Again, 
shitty father. It's not much different in England, though, is it? <laughs> right. Um, we have a lot of similarities as well as a lot of differences. So David made a little effort at school. But when he was nine, he tried out for the junior school's third-year football team, and he played as a goalkeeper. And I'm calling it football, goddammit, because why do we call a game that is played 95% of the time with your feet soccer, and we call it a game that is played 95% of the time with your hands football? And plus, you got to give it to, like, soccer, like, just because 95% of the game, they're actually playing the game. And football, it's like 60% if that. And it's like you meet a foreigner and you call, I'm sorry, I have to call it soccer because we. if you call it football, they think a different kind of football. And we're idiots, you, you know. just call it football extreme manhandling. It's like when we still use Indians. And it's like... Right. <laughs> Columbus just landed and he's like, no, this is India. Well, we got Indians and new football. <laughs> These are Indians. <laughs> no, we're, this is not India. <laughs> oh, so... Uh, so we played goalkeeper, and he proved to be natural. And it was the first time he succeeded in anything. <coughs> Excuse me. And he gave David some confidence in himself. First time, he was good at something. After failing his grade 11 exams, he was given a trial with the Leicester Boys under 14 team. He left at school at 15. He left school at 15, and after being talent spotted by Coventry City, who signed him up in 1967 as a youth team's goalkeeper. In 1970, when David was 18, he started to feel intense pain in his left knee when the team doctor described as rheumatoid arthritis. Doesn't that have to fucking suck? You finally find something you're good at, and you're playing, and then you get fucking arthritis when you're 18. First you're stupid. Yeah. Now you got a bum knee. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Thanks for these genetics. <laughs> oh, so, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, it's like, it's, it's super painful. Like, have you ever seen the people that, like, they have, it looks, they just, their hands kind of roll away, and they just... Yeah, they, it, they curve and it just it sucks and then develop that at 18 years old when you're a, a fucking goalkeeper for some for a football team <laughs> a football team um, so anyway so it started in uh, his left knee and then it spread to his right knee then his ankles his elbows <laughs> and then his hands which has to fucking suck if you're a goalkeeper holy <laughs> oh, shit you can't even grip something right Despite they look like a crypt keeper. Yeah, exactly. Oh my god, isn't it weird? They look like they have little mouse hands. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've noticed. Looks like little mouse hands. It's just, <laughs> when it's are, really bad. They're I mean, just not as agile as Master Splinter, though. Uh, <laughs> it's fucked up. <laughs> this whole thing is fucked up. <laughs> oh. So, uh, despite being in agony while playing, he managed to play part-time here for United in the English Football League, but in 1973, he retired due to his crippling arthritis. Shortly before his retirement, he met and married Linda Atherton. They started dating by the next year they had married. After Ike retired, after Ike retired, he struggled to find steady work, and at one point, sorry, apparently I don't know where to put a goddamn comma. Um, and at one point, each of them had to move back in with their parents. Then, in 1973, David found work as a reporter with the Leicester Advertiser through contact with a sports editor at the Daily Mail. He then moved on to work for BBC Radio Leicester as a football reporter. He then began to work for a radio station in Birmingham. This included an on-air appearance at times. So he started getting on TV, you know, starting to make it. You know, it's like... You know, uh, he giveth and he taketh away. You know, he doesn't get the, you know, he starts developing arthritis. The door is closed, but a window's wide right, open. Right, right, a window's wide right open, and he becomes a sportscaster, and he's, you know, he's pretty, he starts becoming kind of famous. So, in 1981, David became a sports presenter for the BBC's national program, Newsnight. And then in 1983, he appeared on the first edition of BBC's Breakfast Time, which is kind of like our Good Morning America so enjoyed by drunk women at 9 o'clock in the morning between the ages of 40 and 60. I was going to say, is it just as trashy? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. This is, it's a, this, I have a, it's a mimosa. 
I'm having it for breakfast, you know. That just reminds me of the talk show in American Dad. I don't have a problem. Morning Mimosa. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, I, I just, I, I love that, that they just get hammered at 9 o'clock in the morning. And, and they're just like, <laughs> You can't drink all day if you don't start in the morning. <laughs> I got, a, I got a driver. They'll take me home. Fuck it. Why not? Right. Yeah. So, he then achieved his ultimate ambition. So, he co-hosted a show called Grandstand, which was the BBC's number one sports show. So, think like ESPN. But everything's owned by the government over there. Hmm. Uh, so, his relationship with Grandstand became short-lived, as him and one of the show's editors did not get along. I don't like your hands. <laughs> they creep me out. <laughs> You said my comment was fucked up. <laughs> you creep me out just because you have a crippling <laughs> disability. It's weird. <laughs> I don't like it. Don't shake my hand. <laughs> At least you know you won't get a limp fish. <laughs> oh, yeah, God. Uh, You'll get a claw. Uh, <laughs> uh, he continued working for BB Sports until 1990, often on football tournaments and snooker matches. And uh, if anybody doesn't know what snooker is, uh, me neither. So maybe email me and tell me what snooker is. Because <laughs> it's kind of, it looks like pool, but apparently it's not really pool. So maybe I need to just, you know, watch YouTube a little more on it. But I don't know what snooker is, and it looks, I don't know. Have you ever seen snooker before? I have never seen You have any idea what I'm talking about? Nope, okay. it's too close to snooky for me to be. Okay, maybe this is the YouTube comments. Maybe link me, uh, like, a, a link to, like, you know, the history of snooker. And I or can, how like, the fuck it's played. Or, yeah, you know, I, it really is. I figured out cricket, and I figured out curling, but snooker, don't know. Yeah, because curling, just cricket never was never understood. Cricket was easier to understand than I thought it would be, but... Well, yeah, but, I mean, curling at the same time, that one's like... I don't get it. You, I don't get it as a concept. It's got to be so complicated just because, to make it... Like, just brushing ice in front of a disc. I you got to make it complicated. I don't get it. I just don't get it. I'm sure it's a skill. I just don't get it. So, Curling uh, is an epitome of overthinking. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And also a Mercedes. <laughs> His contract... Uh, so, he did... He works for the BBC for the 1988 Olympics. So, he's becoming more and more famous. He's kind of like their version of Bob Costas. If that makes any sense. Um, if you don't know who Bob Costas is, you just Google his name. You'll recognize his face. Uh, so, but in um, in that time, he became disillusioned with television work and claimed that other people in the industry were shallow, insecure, and vicious to others. His contract was terminated with the BBC in 1990 due to his opposition to a tax that was levied by Margaret Thatcher's government. I'm kind of fucked up. You can get tired. You can come out <laughs> post to a tax and get fucking fired. But apparently These they... These people aren't nice. You're fired. <laughs> we don't like your hands either. <laughs> What's up with your knee? <laughs> oh, that's horrible. Anyway... <laughs> So while this was going on, David was still struggling with his arthritis and began to flirt with New Age and natural medicine. And he became uh, intrigued by New Age philosophies in the 1980s. And he thought maybe this would combat his arthritis. While this happened, David began an interest in politics. He joined the Green Party, which was a small pro-government environmental party in the UK. Became one of his became one of its most famous supporters and one of its four speakers. But although he was more popular than ever, Ike was going through a time of personal despair. He claimed that he began to feel a presence around him. He claimed that the presence visited him in the hotel room in March 1990. And Ike yelled, If there's anybody in here, will you please contact me because you are driving me up the wall? Should I not do the British accent anymore? <laughs> it's all you, dude. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry if you live in the UK and you had to hear that. <laughs> I'm not good at it. <laughs> I'm just trying to draw a distinction. Man, I shouldn't do it anymore. Anyway, days later, he felt a force pull his feet to the ground and he heard a voice guide him towards some book. 
Well, if both his feet towards your grandma's probably just been arthritis. <laughs> <laughs> You smell the piece of cheese. You take over there. Cheese. It would just be great every time you felt the presence, you would be warned by the X Files themed. Just so you know, there's something up. So again, you're uh, you're kind of tapping into what's gonna happen. <laughs> Third one in a row. Good job. Yeah. Anyway. The book that he was drawn to was Mind to Mind by Betty Shine. She was a psychic healer. David determined to find her. And because he's famous, he can kind of do that. He can just go into a psychic's office and like, I want a reading. Anyway, which, uh, I, who, do you know anyone who's ever seen a psychic healer? No. Okay. Maybe it's best that that's, that's still the case. I, I, I mean... Shit like that interests me. I don't really believe in the legitimacy of it. But I kind of find that shit interesting. Like that tarot. Occurs, I like the con artist uh, aspect, aspect to it. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it really is just reading people. Mm. You know, I guess maybe if you have to go see a palm reader instead of chugging a bottle of Everclear, you know, maybe go I see mean, a palm reader. This guy's got a bum knee. All you have to do is. You have a future of sitting down a lot. <laughs> Possibly in a motorized chair. Who knows? But you'll get those little slices of cheese. I know you decided. So. In the 90s, a motorized chair was probably just a little like electric motor you bought at Harbor Freight. <laughs> <laughs> Run the wheels. So he found Shine. And he talked to her. And she talked to him. And they began to have regular sessions. So Shine would then tell Icky, or Ike, I kept wanting to call it Icky, the whole time because it is spelled I-C-K-E, and I am like trying so hard not to say Icky. <laughs> That's a weird way to spell Ike. That is the name. That is his name. I, 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 can't, I can't say anything. Uh, Shine would tell Ike that he was special and he was going to do something important. And during one meeting, Ike claimed that something like a spider web on his face he felt something like a spider web on his face and Shine told him that she had a message from the spirit world she told Ike that he had been sent to heal the earth and that he would face opposition for doing so but need not worry because the spirit world would pass ideas to him which that, he would speak about to others that is such a blanket statement <laughs> it is wonderful it's I'm so betting bad. he bought into that it's like this. It's like those. Uh, do you ever see in like those dumbass magazines your astrological sign and like your horoscope and all that? And oh yeah. Mine's a Cancer, but I mean I have never bought. Yeah, the, when they describe those too, they're being incredibly vague, and I just don't. I don't understand it either. I just don't get it. Yeah. I mean, who's who? Honestly, is like looking at that and making preparations for the day. I mean, if anything, you look at it, oh, that's interesting, but then forget the fuck about it. Yeah. It ain't no. gonna do shit. Yeah. Whoops. Oh. But, it, it's just like, okay, you've been screwed by everything medical. You're gonna want to heal people. So that's what the universe is in store <laughs> for you. God. It's literally just... It's self-serving bullshit. That's what it is. Exactly. Um... Of course he's going to reach opposition. This dude looks like fucking Kripke. <laughs> so she told him not only that he uh, had a message in the spirit world and that he'd been sent to heal the earth, he would face opposition from doing so. Of course he would. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Cause, yeah, because what you, you're saying is fucking crazy. Of course you're going to face opposition. Um, but he need not worry because the spirit world would pass ideas to him, which he would speak about to others. She also told him that he would write five books in three years. In two years, in 20 years, sorry, in 20 years, a flying machine would allow us to go anywhere we wanted. Uh, that time would have no meaning. <laughs> and that earthquakes would start happening in unusual places because oils would be taken from the seabed. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, now that shit. <laughs> But I mean, didn't that happen already in the 90s? Kind or of. 80s? Yeah. Like, <laughs> a fly 
flying machine. Okay, yes, that's happening. All you have to do is look outside. No, the time has no meaning. That's just called booze. Dude, strap in because it's going to get crazier. <laughs> I mean, if it was like the 70s and this said oil from the sea bed, you go, okay, this chick probably freaks me the fuck out. But I'm kind of... Oh, so in February of 1991... Ike visited a pre-Inca burial ground in Peru where he felt drawn to a particular circle of waist-high stones. As he stood there, it began to rain. And then he said that his body began to shake as if it was plugged into an electrical socket. And new ideas began pouring into him. He described the experience as something that activated his energy centers. All it was is his LSD kicked in. <laughs> you had the brown acid, David. That's what happened. That's what happened. There's the drop. <laughs> that that yeah, that was it. <laughs> you had the bad acid. Um, then I began what he called his turquoise period. He began to only wear the colored turquoise. <laughs> what is he from? Like an old oil baron in Texas? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, you know what? This is 1991, so I guess you can kind of get away with it because the style was just so fucking terrible. <laughs> so yeah. You can kind of wear it. So, yeah, he, he rocked turquoise everywhere he went. Everywhere. He was rocking that turquoise. Then in March 1991, Ike abruptly resigned from the Green Party during a press conference, telling everyone that he was about to be at the center of enormous and increasing controversy. Controversy in politics? What? Uh, yeah. So I then told everyone that he had some new ideas he wanted to share. So again, this guy is like Bob Costas. So imagine this happened here. Bob Costas just went on went insane. <laughs> he told the reporters that he was the godhead, and that the world as we know it would end in 1997. It would be preceded by a hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico, which that's kind of. Yeah. <laughs> Volcano eruptions in Cuba. Okay, a little crazy. Right. I mean, the hurricanes are in the Gulf. That's like every fucking year. Hurricanes in Northern Ireland and Scotland, so implausible. <laughs> implausible. That Los Angeles would become its own island. Uh, New Zealand would disappear. And that this information was being given to him by voices and automatic writing which is a psychic term for receiving words that aren't written down. <laughs> Naturally. <Man. laughs> I wonder if the psychic is really just a badass dealer. <laughs> <laughs> so it gets better. <laughs> Here's some incense. Really is an incense, but just toss him to huff it. Ugh. <laughs> uh. So naturally, these statements received a lot of attention in the UK, and Ike was invited on several talk shows so that people could figure out what the fuck happened to him. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Where's Ike? <laughs> Where's... Again, he's Bob Costas. He's the Bob Costas of Britain at this time. So, on April 29th, 1991, coincidentally, that's his uh, 39th birthday, Ike was scheduled to appear a show called Wogan, and it proved to be an absolute disaster for him. He came out wearing a turquoise tracksuit. So, it comes out rocking a turquoise tracksuit <laughs> at this English talk show. <laughs> Jesus. And the host, Terry Wogan, asked him to explain his statements. He told the audience that the Godhead was a positive spiritual force that exists throughout all of humanity that Lucifer was a force through which all negative energy went through well of course heavy metal uh, right. he claimed the earth would soon go through dramatic changes he also claimed that Saddam Hussein was dead <laughs> <laughs> little did he know in 1991 <laughs> he's, he's he's a I mean, he was eventually right. <laughs> yeah, but what's funny is he's a newscaster. He's a or at least was. Even in sports, you should at least pay attention to your fucking career field. So the audience began loudly laughing at him. <laughs> I wonder why. Ike then said, that's fine. Laughter's good for you. And that we should all more, laugh more often. 
the host then told Ike, they're playing, they're laughing at you. They're not laughing with you. <laughs> ah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Laughter's good. Ike then became indignant and told the audience that 2,000 years ago, if Jesus came on here and told you his beliefs, you would have laughed at him too. I mean, right. they kind of did. <laughs> they did. This prompted more laughter from the audience. <laughs> Just no winning. Uh, a tough crowd. He showed up to a roast he didn't realize was going to happen. <laughs> That's what happened. The interview made Ike a household name, but not in the way that he'd wanted. He was now a national laughing stock. He was ridiculed by the British public everywhere he went. In May 1991, the police were even called to his home after a hundred youths stood outside Ike's house and chanted, We want the Messiah! <laughs> <laughs> and, Give us a sign, David! <laughs> you can lie for Brian. <laughs> That's just shit all over again. So I said that one okay, but then... <laughs> No, they they were they were all these teenagers just sitting outside, and just mocking him. Fucking trolling him. <laughs> this is what should have happened to Trump. <laughs> Initially, we wouldn't be in this mess. There's kids going outside of his house. You are a fucking idiot. <laughs> just going to the White House all at once, just in secret. You are fired house before before this all happened. <laughs> when he was claiming that he had uh, 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 Obama's birth certificate. Well, I would find funny is if everyone went to, like, or a lot of people went to the White House to go, you're fired. Would he actually believe it? <laughs> oh, there's a lot of people. They, 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 they must... He gets confused. He's old. <laughs> no, no, no. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. He drives me insane. Yeah. <laughs> so, um,. Icky then went into public hiding, and he began uh, writing numerous books and expanding on his original theory. In 1989, he wrote his most radical book yet, titled The Biggest Secret. Now, what was that secret, you ask? It was lizard people. Yeah, because it's not that he's a fucking sight. Like. <laughs> it was lizard people. According to Ike, there is a secret race of reptilian shapeshifters called the Babylonian Brotherhood. <laughs> First the mighty men, and then the Babylonian Brotherhood. They have controlled it's... the world for thousands of years. I wonder if, it, like, dude, do you take the mighty men and the Babylonian Brotherhood, it just sounds like Justice League versus the Masters of Evil. Well, the Babylonian Brotherhood would beat the fuck out of the mighty men. I mean, we all know that. They're, 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 they're not sexually repressed. Well, I mean, to begin with, they're fucking lizard people, so... Fucking lizard people. Uh, these, so, he thinks they control the world. These lizard people are part of the Illuminati. <laughs> they manipulate global events to keep humans in constant fear. They feed off humanity's fear and anxiety. They are descendants from the constellation Draco. They live in caves inside the Earth. They are interdimensional, and they have stopped us all from living to our fullest potential. <laughs> That's a lot to unpack. <laughs> right? It just sounds kind of like a Rothschild conspiracy. It, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, say all the like weird and stupid conspiracies about that. It just it kind of sounds just similar to that. Um, what a nice excuse for job interview, right? Right. They're like, well, uh, you know, you haven't been employed in a while. I'm not living up to my fullest potential. <laughs> Why not, lizard people? Right. <laughs> Training it from me. Uh, so, um, according to Ike, they also, uh, these lizard people that uh, run the world, they control the pharmaceutical, banking, technological, energy, medical, food, and entertainment industries. They control all of them. So they control everything. Uh, they control uh, how we handle our money. They control what goes in our bodies. They control what we see. And they control who we're, um, what we're eating. <laughs> they control our health care. They control everything. So, Fucking lizard people. <laughs> so, um, I claims that most of the world's powerful people are reptilians, <laughs> including 35 of the last 40 presidents. <laughs> oh my god. 
Fucking th- one throwing shade at her country. <laughs> <laughs> so that includes Presidents Obama, George W. Bush, George H. W. Bush, JFK, Lyndon Johnson, Richard Nixon, Ronald Reagan, and Franklin Roosevelt. Because definitely George W. Bush <laughs> is part of a, a race of superior lizard people. <laughs> well, he's related to his father, so that's why. But um, the superior part. <laughs> Uh, he looks like a uh, no. He looks are like a fucking to, Einstein right now. <laughs> are they supposed to be like intellectual and powerful? Uh, How is George W. Bush part of that? I'm not done with the list yet. <laughs> oh, man. Also includes Bill and Hillary Clinton, <laughs> Al Gore. Okay, have you seen Bill lately? Yeah, I know. <laughs> he just he, wants to kick back. <laughs> the dude looks like he's molting. <laughs> <laughs> he went on a vegan diet. That's why. Um, <laughs> So, Bill and Hillary Clinton, Al Gore, Dick Cheney, Winston Churchill, Tony Blair, the British royal family, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Habsburgs of Austria, Adolf Hitler, Joseph Stalin, several Egyptian pharaohs over the centuries, uh, the Jacobites of the French Revolution, Mark Zuckerberg, and Chris Christopherson. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you just like, label like someone random on that one? Chris Christopherson. He's my favorite country, so he must be a lizard, people. Sunday morning coming down was, uh, it was about, uh, me, uh, coming out as a lizard. <laughs> I don't like country, but I like Chris Christopherson. He must be a lizard person, because he, I like it. Me and Bobby McGee was about a relationship I have with another lizard named Bobby McGee. <laughs> oh, jeez. damn. Out of all things. So, um, also, they believe uh, Ted Cruz is a lizard, but that's true. (laughs) (laughs) Who was that politician that, like, I forgot his name, but who tried to run for president and everyone called him the Zodiac Killer? (laughs) Ted Cruz. (laughs) Is that Ted Cruz? Yeah. Ted Cruz. Even his supporters would be like, yeah, he might be a lizard. <laughs> right? I mean, how he speaks alone, just like... Are sounds, these human feelings your feeling? Sounds like he's about to, like, slither fuck away. <laughs> he looks through. Uh. Okay, I wonder if lizard people are real, what they really thought of uh, Pentecostal <laughs> church. <laughs> They're handling our people wrong! <laughs> Lizards and snakes don't get along, so I don't think they would. <laughs> <laughs> Reptilian's reptilian. Oh. You may look like a lizard, but still act like a snake. Uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, okay. So he also he also claims that the lizard the lizard Illuminati manipulate world events in order to live off humanity's fear and anxiety. <laughs> Just. You know, it keeps on better. <laughs> the lizard Illuminati. Like, the Illuminati couldn't be anywhere. Like, it's the lizard Illuminati. Um, so, um, they have been behind 9-11, which they maintain was an inside job. <laughs> the slave trade. Jet fuel doesn't melt steel yeah. wings. Global warming. Water fluoridation, the JFK assassination, the Oklahoma City bombings, the death of Princess Diana, and the entire Cold War. <laughs> okay, so again, a blanket statement. Let's take everything bad and just put it under lizard people. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much what they're doing. Yeah, I'm sure syphilis is instead under of too. like, hey, it's Republican, hey, it's Democrat. No, 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 guys, guys, I've been there. Fucking lizard people. It's lizard man. people. <laughs> it's lizard people. They're everywhere. <laughs> it's... Oh, so. In addition to their ability to shapeshift, they also practice human sacrifice. <laughs> no, no, I'm not done. <laughs> and, uh, human sacrifice, blood drinking, <laughs> child molestation, and Satanism. <laughs> so we're going back to kind of the Davidian thing. <laughs> okay. Ike even hinted that the movie Eyes Wide Shut shows an accurate portrayal of an Illuminati blood orgy.